Dan said installation, you had your four days of that. Yeah, we have, we've had four days of installation. Today we had our red zone installation, so we've got some work down there on the goal line in the red zone, which was, which was good. We needed the work. Uh, the one thing about the red zone that's so much, it's not different, but it really, really helps you because your thought processes have to speed up because the field starts shortening, and now all of a sudden those windows are a lot shorter in your passing game, and you got to get rid of the football, you got to release it. And it was good for us to see how well the kids could process stuff. Uh, very pleased with Tyler. He still was a little bit slow at times. You know, there's some couple times I wish he'd have pulled the trigger a couple times earlier, but he's getting familiar again, uh, you know, to going at this speed. Uh, you know, Dak is not close to where Tyler is. He's processing things still, you know, okay. You got one to two to three. One, two, oh, we're sacked. You know, I mean, that's that's the process that we're going through right now with Dak, and he's, he's struggling a little bit processing things, but he will get better at it because he just needs to see it. As a quarterback, that's the hardest thing to replicate is to get those game situations and let them see it, see it, see it. And that's what we're doing right now. And it was a really, really good, uh, you know, scrimmage. And also, you get out of the huddle, you let the kids lead. You know, some of the biggest things in quarterback play is, is you know, everybody's excited about a guy that can throw the football. Yes, that's really big. Everybody's excited about a guy that can run the football. That's really big. But the major issues are the decision-making processes. How quick can you make decisions? and make those decisions correctly. And I think that's a big part of growing as a quarterback. Yeah, the red zone situation, is that, is that the place you can see using deck? Know you're oh, yeah. I mean, you know, we can use, as you well, you've seen us use everybody in there. You know, uh, we've used Dak, Jamie on bump. We've used everybody in that situation. Uh, you know, we always want to give ourselves the flexibility of having a multiple offense. That, you know, even though if Tyler, you know, Tyler, Obviously, you don't want to line him up and run the football with him. I mean, but you can put him out there with other people that can run the football. And, I mean, that's the thing that people don't quite understand about the spread. They say, oh, the spread offense. Well, what does the spread mean? The spread either means that you, if the quarterback can throw it, you throw it. If he can run it, you run it. So it's very multiple. So you have those things that you've got to be able to do. Are those the kind of situations where Joe Moore would be a guy that would be his time? Well, the issue down there is, you know, the field slow, it obviously shortens. So separation is not near as much. So now you're starting to look to bigger receivers, guys that can body up people. Uh, you know, in, in receiver play, it's pretty simple. You don't make those things really hard. There's two ways to win on a route, either one, by getting position, or two, by turning a guy. And, you know, obviously with Joe, getting position is a lot easier than it would be with somebody a lot smaller. You've had um, some good backs since you've been here, but if you talk about the different talents that those four guys bring. There's no doubt. Of, you, you know, when you walk out there, I mean, you know, uh, Perk's got some, a lot of quick explosiveness. You watch him when he gets through the hole, he can accelerate and get to that second gear really, really fast. Uh, you know, Dixon and Ballard were bigger backs. They were, you know, they'd hammer up in there, break tackles, and make some things happen. Uh, you know, now we've kind of got a mixture of all of them with Josh and and Milton and all those kids, you know, uh, they're all kind of a little bit different. You know, each one of them is different, and their styles are different when they run. Uh, you know, Coach Knox has done a great job. We try to reduce tackling surface. You know, when people come to tackle us, we try to turn their shoulders, reduce it. Well, Josh has got what well, he's born with a reduced tackling surface. <laughs> he's, he's a bowling ball, you know, and so those are things that are uh, a tribute to a back, you know, you know, trying to get him down. With so, so many body. guys there, yeah. um, Josh and Derek, their attitudes, very humble guys, and know their role. I mean, I know it's not rare, but how good is that to have when you got so many bags for those guys to be like that? I think that's a tribute to our program. I mean, you know, when you come to Mississippi State, you know, we're, we're going to work you hard. We're going to try to get you to obtain every goal you can possibly. You know, and I think those are the things they look forward to. You know, we're, we're going to push you to be good. And if you don't, the next guy's going to step up. And that's what our team thinks. And I think that's important. You know, and, and they're good kids. But, you know, all, obviously when you walk in that room, you want them all to have the opportunity to play. And you, you, it's really easy. You earn the right to play. You know what I'm saying? I say, I say those to the kids all the time. You earn the right to play. You know, respect is not given, it's earned. And I think that's real critical. Okay? You know, uh, we had a little deal the other day. Uh, confidence is earned and not given. How can I give you confidence? Can I lay hands on you and give you confidence? <laughs> it ain't going to happen. <laughs> You've got to gain the confidence of your teammates and your coaches, and I think that's really critical. There's so many different guys back there, and, and you talk about tackle search with Josh Robinson. We see him in the spring. Is that mm -hmm. a guy that's almost tailor-made for red zone and maybe some goal line stuff here early in the season? Well, I mean, again, 
it, it doesn't matter where. I yeah. mean, you know, it's just who can break the tackle. As you well know, we can probably get a hat on ten of them. There's going to be one of them that's free, yeah. and that, and that's you know a deal for a back to make break a tackle. And uh, you know that's where they you know get in the NFL. They pay them a lot of money if they can break a tackle. You know, Chad Bumpus, you know, had to rely on him from from day one. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe you say he struggled the last year or two. Do you, do you see him approaching this senior year a little bit different, a little more? You know, just like a lot of seniors would with that sense of urgency and whatnot. Well, I think they all. I mean, you know, it, again, we're making an evaluation on a, on a kid that a season haven't even started. I'm, I'm looking forward to the season. As far as preseason, yes. Uh, but, you know, there's the, the true, true leaders, you know, it, it's easy to lead when you're in front. That's easy. You know, what do you do when nobody looks? What do you do when nobody's around? That's your true leaders, you know. Uh, you you got to have that, that type of leadership where they come in here, hey, we're going to get it done. Yeah, I think one of the big issues that you find out with successful football teams, the ones I've been around, is that the, the players lead. You know, you, you can't lead as a coach. You can't get in there and say, okay, well, you know, you can instruct them, you can put them in the right area, but, you know, there needs to be some responsibility and accountability upon them. There's no really great football plays. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, wow, what a great play. Well, if you don't execute it, it's not going to be a great play. You've got to take that pride. You've got to take step one. Some people like to drive the cart before they can hitch up the horse, you know. I mean, it's as simple as it gets. Chris Smith, uh, we heard he's just a lot different the way he's carrying himself. Mm -hmm. I think Tyler has had a lot to do with that, that, that connection they've got. And well, I, I, you know, they've been together since high school. Yeah. So obviously that's a good connection, but, uh, you know, uh, I think it's the same with all our receivers. You know, they get in there. Uh, you'll watch us in practice sometimes. You, you don't see Dan and I go over and y'all go talk it out. We have no eligibility. <laughs> y'all yeah. go talk it out. Y'all, y'all, let us know exactly uh, what the issue is there. Well, having a quarterback that's kind of more apt to throw in the football does that open up the playbook at all more so than in years? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, it opens it up in the throwing game for sure. You know, I mean, in, in, in the run, and it'll help your running game. I mean, you're gonna get reduced boxes. You're gonna be able to run the football a little bit better too. Uh, you know, there's two ways, and there's two thought processes everybody got to go through. If you have a quarterback that can uh, can run, then he creates numbers with an overloaded box because you because he's a, he's the guy carrying the ball. But if it's a quarterback who can can, th can throw, then he creates numbers by getting people out of the box. So does that kind of excite you as a coordinator to maybe call some plays that you hadn't called before? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I get you excited. I mean, everybody, you know. But again, it, I wish I could sit here and, and I've been through it so long. You know, some of the plays you think are the greatest plays you ever called, and it's just all execution. You know, if you go out there and you execute and do it, you're going to have a chance. I tell this to the quarterbacks, the receivers, and the O line. You know, we have we point IDs to, with the O line and everything. I said, fellas. If y'all are all on the wrong page, you got a chance to be successful. If one of y'all is doing it one way and one's doing it the other way, you have no chance of being successful. Get together. Make sure you're on the same page. You'll have a chance to be successful. On uh, Josh Robinson, back in the spring, there was one scrimmage he did really well. I started asking me about him. He mm -hmm. said, well, he's still got to figure out when to block and when to go out. Ain't no doubt. That, <laughs> it's gotten better. It's still there, but it's gotten better. It's still there, but he's young, but it's gotten better. Maybe the main thing, I don't want to say holding it back, but is that the, the main thing you're worried about with him? Well, again, that's part of it. I think the other part's competition. You know, you, you got some really good competition in that room, and so that's really going to make you good. You know, it's easy to coach when you walk in a room and you got two to three people biting for one position. And, uh, you know, we grade our kids every day. We give them a grade, put it down, and show it to them. You know, and the thing you want to do is you, they want you to be truthful. Well, coach, here it is. Okay. Chad had a lot of expectations coming out of high school. A lot of people would say he hadn't fulfilled those. I mean, do you think that's is even a fair assessment that people have made of him, especially when he had to come in? Well, it's hard. It, it's hard for it's hard for me to to comment on any of that because the season haven't hasn't even you know gone over. I mean, I think you know I'm very happy to have Chad Mumps on a football team. I really am. I think he's he, he can be really dynamic and he's done some really good things for us. Uh, but again, uh, you know. You wish you were programs where you didn't have to play freshman. Yeah. You know, we came in here in the right to play. You know, so he played. And uh, those are those are things that, as you see, we're not playing near as many young kids as we did when we first got here, uh, because there's a little bit more depth, and, and we created that depth for us, and that's helpful for us.
you know, Jamie on last year in that Memphis game, and, you know, he's a young guy. He's got a lot Holy to learn. Yeah. But the things he did, everybody, he got a lot of attention, and then obviously just kind of fell to the wayside because he had a lot to learn still. What do you expect from him this year? I mean, is he going to be? Expect him not to catch the ball on the two-yard line on the kickoff. <laughs> 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 Just uh, uh, you know, I mean, those are but those are things you're answering your yeah, own question. I hate yeah. to say it. I mean, you see, he's starting to pick up the offense. He's starting to learn more. He's starting to be more dynamic because he feels more comfortable. I mean, poor guy's just trying to make a play, you know, against Memphis. He's trying to, to make a play and, you know, catches the ball and runs out of bounds. But those are things he's learning about. I mean, you'd much rather have guys that want to make a play than ones that don't want to make a play. Yeah. You know. And Coach Mullen, you guys have talked about making him concentrate on being a receiver. Mm -hmm. Does that completely uh, eliminate the idea of him being a Wildcat quarterback this year? Is there still a chance there? There's always chances. Anytime Jamion has the ball in his hands, something's going to happen. Quote, something's going to happen. Something could be good, something could be bad, but something's going to happen. He's excited. And, you know, the more consistency he gets, the better off we'll be. There's been a lot of talk about throwing it downfield more often. you got Joe Morrow and all that. but. Mm -hmm. You got Chad and Jamie on and uh, Brandon there at the slot position. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some pretty good talent there. I mean, how important is, it, is that, you know, compared to maybe people maybe just overlooking a little bit? You know, those guys have all played since they've been here. You know, they've been on the field one way or another, uh, except Jamie on. You know, we had the opportunity to redshirt him, you know, earlier. Uh, I, I think the competition at that position is fierce, and it's going to really bring out the best in that position because, you, you know, when you walk into a game, and the kid's having a bad day or something's happening, you've got to have ways to manufacture playmakers. You know, again, I can say this from last year, we're two or three plays away from winning two other football games last year. And everybody in the SEC could probably say that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it comes down to making the play. That's what it comes down to. You're going to have those opportunities, you got to make them. Good to have some variety at the receiver position yeah, this is. year. Well, depth is, is increased too. You know I mean? You know, depth and variety has increased. Having only two scholarship quarterbacks, how important is it to develop those walk-ons, even just to get a very, look on that very scout team? Important, very important. Uh, you know, Jamil and, and Swindle have done, a, and Stephen Swindle have done a really good job for us, but they're learning. Their heads are swimming. I mean, you know, they go through it. And I laugh. Jamil was really funny today. I mean, he threw a bad ball, and you thought he would. He, I, I thought he had a heart attack. I mean, he was jumping. Like, what? What was wrong with you? You know, and he kind of goes. I said, imagine what that would look like on 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 ESPN. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't look too good, would it? No. <laughs> so we're coaching every part of it, boys. It's not just throw it, it's just the reaction afterwards and, and different things. You know, body language is, is with those young freshmen is something you can pick up really, really quick. Do you feel join that group? Yes, Sam will come in. He'll come in the fall. Do you feel yeah. fortunate to get a guy like Jamil in, you know, as a walk on? You didn't have to I do. If y'all talk to him, y'all can't talk to him. Yeah, He's absolutely him. hilarious. He is absolutely hilarious. It doesn't mean to be hilarious, you know. I, I, you know, but he's really, really funny. And for the first couple of days, it took me some use to getting used to him, because I would ask him a question, and his response to me was, "Who? Who? What do you run on that route? Who? What was that play? Who? How many people out there? Who?" I said, "We don't have a damn owl in here. We got a quarterback." <laughs> But his response, for some reason, was "who," "who," and I, I'd laugh. Watch it. Not a, you're not an owl. Asked me the question, "who?" <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> what route we run there? Who? <laughs> y'all get it? Y'all ain't see what y'all have ever just did. Who? He didn't say who. He asked you a specific question. Yeah. There's a reply with that question. But it's funny. Well, fellas.